Okay, welcome to the next part, part two, maybe part three, uh, two of two of two, two of three, I don't know. But we're just going to go right along here. We're going to put in our pallet fork. Very tiny axle on this thing. Unbelievable how they can machine something that small and maintain the integrity of the material. Fascinating stuff when it comes to this scale. At least for me. I think that's in. I think so. We're going to find out. Okay, you'll know when it's in. Pallet fork bridge. The compact movement. Everything's in here pretty tight. Very slick. I don't like the looks of that. I'm going to put this to the loop. Actually, it does look pretty good. It does look pretty good. I was looking at the tail end of that fork. I wasn't happy with the way it was sitting. But I still have to make sure. Okay. I think it's okay, but we're going to test it either way. Hopefully, we can get this done quickly. But if not, I'll just make it another part. All right, come on. I'm putting a little too much pressure on that. And it's slipping off. Don't let it slip. Okay. And there's another thing I want to point out on the opposite side of this movement are some jewels that don't carry an axle. They are load bearing jewels in that they support the date ring. I wanted to show you that earlier and I forgot. Okay, we just barely have tension on that. And we have good movement. Let's put a few wind, put a few clicks into this. And we're in the shot. There we go. Alright, that's a good sign. Just touched that and it snaps back and forth with just a few clicks into the main spring. That's a good sign. I'm going to go in. Tighten up these pallet fork bridge screws. We're going to put a smear of oil on those before we forget. If I don't do it now, it won't get done. I try to remember to do it later. It doesn't happen. Let's come around this side. And this depends on how long it takes me to put the the balance in. If this gets long winded, well the balance will go in easy. It's that shock jewel and spring that seems to be the pain at times. Okay. Let's get that in the shot, get it referenced. There you go. Oh jeez. Yeah, I'm just dropping stuff.
I'm just locating my uh, balance here, people. Bear with me. Sometimes it takes me a while just to get organized. Okay, I have my tail end of my fork pushed to the one side. Then I come in like this. Okay, come on. What are you going to do? Hang up on me? Always something. Come on, don't hang up. Okay, let's try this again. Always something to contend with. Look at that. I had to take that out of the shot to get my eyeballs closer, but as soon as I put it on there, it started ticking. Well, we have two or three, well, maybe more than that, clicks into it. That's a good sign. All my videos are showing how to put in a balance assembly that are in the shot pretty much all the time. Next, we're going to put, actually, let's do this first. Let's put our screw in. Let's get that located. Sometimes when you go to put those shims in, that thing can jump out. So let's locate it right now. It's a good feeling when a balance starts ticking the instant you drop it into place with just a few winds. Does that mean it's going to be an outstanding timekeeper? No. Or that it's going to have balance amplitudes upwards of 300 degrees? No, it doesn't. Um, it just means it's going to tick and work well. With a lot of these Russian Soviet pieces, anything over 250, I kind of like. 250 and up. 250 to 270. That's not a bad. That's not bad. All right. Let's put this jewel in. I'm gonna take that out of the shot because I gotta. I'm gonna put some oil on the top of that before I put that capstone on. I gotta get in real tight on this. Oh, come on. Yes, I'm talking to my oiler. All right, hold on, people. This might be a three parter. Because my jewel is giving me problems. All right, it's always something. Come on. Does it help to talk to it? No. When I was a car mechanic, we always yelled at it. I worked for Citron and Peugeot for a while. Those are the kind of cars you had to yell at. Because they were tedious sometimes. I didn't mind working on them. I liked them, especially Citron. 
They were neat little cars. Well, some are quite big. All right, we're going to put that spring in next. So I can get it to behave. Oh boy. It's one of those days. Actually, it's one of those nights. Now my doggie's nosing me to play. I know, Daisy, you want to play. We'll play when we're done here. Oh my goodness. This Rotico is sticky stuff. Sticking to everything. It's a funny thing about Rotico. When you want it to stick real good, it doesn't. I must have warmed it up. Won't let go. That's probably a piece of rotico stuck on it. I don't even know if I'm in the shot, people. Now we are. Now that it's in, we are going to hold it in place. Don't tell me that came out. Ah, what a No, it's there. It's in place. It's just being a mule, people. The Rodico is good stuff because it prevents disasters. I think that one's not in. And by disasters, I mean losing springs. Why doesn't that want to go in? Jeez, that just took too long. Fighting me the whole way. Fighting, fighting, fighting. Ah, uh, yeah. It is one of those things. I couldn't imagine doing this eight hours a day. 20 years ago? Yeah. Or more like 30 years ago? Well, there we go. Ticking away nicely. Still got tarnish on those wheels, but I can't do anything about that. And that balance is working good. Let's have a look at that hairspring. Got no coils sticking together. This should run pretty well. Probably 270 degrees of amplitude. I would think I don't know so we are going to stop this because we're 14 minutes in and we're going to assemble the rest of that complication right in here we'll dedicate a part just to putting that in and showing you how that works so hopefully I didn't bore you to death <laughs>